Well, hi, you guys. Hey, Sharon Green. How are you? Woo. <laughs> hi, everybody. Okay, I am sitting here with multiple devices trying to make sure that I can uh, chat with you guys. So bear with me so I can see you guys. We are streaming on Facebook, on Amazon, and on YouTube. So bear with me so I can make sure that I can see your comments. Say hi to me. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Janice with Artist at Heart Paint Party. I am so excited to be here with you guys and share some of my fall favorite finds. Uh, hey, Renee. Hi, you guys. All right. So uh, I am an artist. If you couldn't tell, I wore this just for you tonight, but I'm getting a little hot. I might be having a hot flash. <laughs> I like to wear my beret when my hair is not at its finest. Okay. That would be tonight. You guys, it is, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. It is raining up a storm. One minute the sun is out and the next minute it's pouring. So we don't know what's going to happen. It's so funny. All right. So I have my stream on my phone here to watch chat. And then I have my Amazon over here. I'll talk about my cases on my phones later, but um, I'm not great at multitasking. So you know what? Why don't we just get started? And if I don't say hi to you guys, forgive me. So, um, all right. I see. Uh, hello, Amazon. Hello. And you guys, if you join me on Amazon, you could actually see the products that I'm going to be sharing with you. If you've never been on the Amazon live platform, I put the link in the description so you can come on over to Amazon. And I'm just going to show you guys real quick. So the way it looks is that there's a carousel underneath where I'm streaming and you'll see all the products that I'm using down below just to make it easier for you guys. So if you're not familiar with me, I'm an accidental entrepreneur, right? So I started going live when COVID hit and I just said, use any supplies that you guys want to, but people really wanted a supply list. And so that, it just evolved to Amazon naturally, because again, I was, you know, using certain products and people wanted to use the products that I was using. So tonight I have some of my favorite products here along with other things like fresh flowers and scarecrows because it's that time of year. So in my, um, I usually use styrofoam plate for my acrylic paints. It's a really super easy cleanup. And when I do a paint party, I have, you know, I'm all about the environment too. I have really figured out what's best to have a palette that's washable, uses a lot of water or, a disposable plate and it's just more economical to have a disposable plate than just waste a lot of water washing everything just fyi so i want to share with you guys before we get going i'm going to do this tonight and we'll do other fun stuff i'm going to start streaming more if you guys tell me what time works for you i'm really going to play around with dates and times you know i can't find anything to watch anymore on tv i think i watch tv too much uh the last couple years so I have just been creating and um, enjoying, you know, other things. First of all, do you guys know the difference between a stretch canvas? All right, let's see what mess I'm going to make tonight. If you don't know me, I'm kind of a bull in a china shop. So a stretch canvas has a frame on the back of it. You see, all right, look at it. It's taped on the back because I poked a hole. But it's a frame. You see that? It's on a wooden frame. And it's stretched canvas. And gesso, right? So that the acrylic paint will stick to it. A panel is flat. So a panel is this. I use panels a lot when I'm doing a, a corporate event where people are traveling and it's easily uh, portable, right? It fits easily and it's lighter weight. It's also real easy to frame. So it really just depends on what you like to create on. I tend to use, I think it looks really nice to use a framed canvas. All right. And I'm going to be using Arteza acrylic paints. They're really, really pretty and they come in tubes and I can do it. All right. It's messy, but <laughs> I was putting them out before you guys came on. So I was starting some of my colors 
So they're heavy bodied acrylic paint, which means that they're thicker. So the thicker the, uh, the acrylic paint is, the more opaque it is. The thinner it is, like the little bottles that you can buy and squeeze out, that tends to be a more light to medium acrylic paint. So it's gonna be more transparent and you're probably going to need a couple coats of it, especially if you're doing a large area. I prefer the heavy bodied acrylic paint, but I use them both. So I want you to realize that I use so many different kinds of paint, but I definitely prefer the heavy bodied. And then I don't have to do a couple coats, especially on this painting. So I just um, wanted to get started first. Let me, so this is the hard part. I have to try to maneuver my, my little, uh, can't my little thing here. So that again, I was already talking about the Arteza acrylic paint and I'm going to come back to that. Okay. So here I have, oh, I have a variety. Oh, I'm on the wrong phone. That's what I get for using two phones. Hey, Tracy. Hi, you guys. All right. So here's my, the one I want to use. So here's my carousel. Here's some canvases in different sizes. Oh, I should tell you guys too about, well, let's go to the pencils. I'm gonna to try to go in order. I tried to get organized. All right, so you guys, these pencils are the best. I don't know if you know I'm a certified art teacher. These pencils are amazing. They stay sharp. They don't, oh, you can't really see them up close. They don't break when you drop them, especially if you're, teaching kids who drop pencils all the time. Okay, and I'm gonna sketch it out. So I'm gonna sketch up my tree. Lots of times I don't sketch it out first. So I'm gonna use it vertical, right? Like this, just because I'm gonna do a tall tree. So it really depends on how you want your tree to look. But again, I just wanna do a nice, simple, bright autumn tree. I'm gonna sketch it out for you. Normally I would do it in Sharpie, but I just want you to see what the sketches. Do you see that? So many people are so afraid on that stark white canvas. To This is the hardest part is to get it dirty, right? Like, oh, and don't, you have to just let go and not worry about making a mistake. So I'm just going to make it a little bit wider at the bottom. And then as my branches come out, they're going to get thinner. And I like when they break off. So they should see that's a little bit thicker. So it should get thinner as you work your way out. And I'm just, again, I'm going to make them split into little branches like that. Okay. And then I'm going to bring this over here. And I'm just going to keep going off the edge. I'm really not going to worry about all my little sketchy lines. This would be really nice to do sitting outside. If you have trees, you could actually do it outside. This is like a plain air painter, right? Now, the way it was here today, I didn't want to be outside. It was, again, it was so windy and rainy. And I have to tell you guys, the other day, while I was streaming, we lost power. So you guys just really, it's organic and natural. You just want to add, isn't, that kind of looks like it could be symbolic of someone stretching their arms out. It kind of looks like that, doesn't it? All right, maybe I'll, I'll put some more down here. You could add, and again, you, I like when people customize it and make it their own. You could put a swing here. You could, I'm going to make this part a little bit wider down here. I could add like a heart on the tree with initials. So 
So this is fun art, not fine art. You don't have to worry about being perfect or, you know. It's really just for relaxing, being mindful. And it doesn't have to be perfect before you start painting. So I just wanted to show you guys, you know, a quick and easy way to lay out your design if you want to. Many times I do not pre-sketch it. I just thought I would share with you, right, my favorite pencils. So if you're on Amazon with me, there's my favorite pencils down there. My favorite sharpeners over here, <laughs> which I always have. All right, sorry about the noise. Here we go. Oh, maybe that one's not good. All right, that one's plugged in. So this one, you guys, that's a different pencil sharpener. So I have two here. This is my traditional regular pencil size. I have this one too because I have so many different pencils that are different sizes, which are great for if you have, you know, different age kids at home and also if you have different size pencils. So I do. I have different size pencils and, and everything. So here's what I want to do next. I want to, well, I have a lot of Sharpies. So I'm going to share with you guys, look at this, look at all my Sharpies here. I have Sharpies in every room of my house. Okay. So, and I have red solo cups everywhere too. So I have all different sizes. My absolute favorite size is the fine point Sharpie marker. Okay. I definitely use this fine point Sharpie the most. Now, what I want to show you guys is before I start painting, especially if I'm doing a paint party, I would uh, outline a lot of times for the customers, everything first in Sharpie. So as an example, here's a campfire, a campfire with roasting marshmallows. It's all outlined in Sharpie. That way it won't bleed into the artwork and you can paint right over the lines and you and you won't see them. That's why I like to use really opaque paint. So this is a Sharpie, so it's waterproof, right? So it doesn't matter what kind of paint I'm using. I'm going to use acrylic, but it covers it and it won't bleed into the artwork. All right. So I'll show you another one. Here's a castle for you guys. Okay. So this one I started and... It's all roughly outlined in the Sharpie, right? And I was doing the Starry Night because I love Starry Night. But again, I pre-outlined it. You can even see my pencil lines on that one. So I sketched it out in pencil. I don't even erase the pencil because I'm going to paint over it. All right. So what I'm going to do next then is, hey, Tracy G. How are you guys? Thanks, you guys, for watching me and following me. I appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to start going live more, you guys. I uh, have not been consistent, and that is my new promise to you and to myself to be more consistent with going live. And if you guys let me know what time works, I'm going to adjust accordingly. I'm going to test it out for a little bit and see if this is too late or what day of the work uh, which day of the week is best for you guys. So anyway, here's my tree. Again, roughly sketched out. Now I'm going to take my Sharpie, right? I'm going to take my Sharpie so you can see it. <laughs> All right. So here goes. So I, again, I'm just going to outline my Sharpie. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? I can change it. I can always add to it. This is just to give me an idea before I start my painting. And the reason why I use the Sharpie is because it won't bleed in my paint. And I'm going to finish the tree up here. So I like to say I'm an accidental entrepreneur because you guys, I had never gone live before COVID. And if you don't know I the story, I, I like to tell people the story as I'm creating, I had mostly uh, moms and grandmothers who followed me 
on social media because I was doing paint and sips. And when COVID hit, all my jobs got canceled, right? Everything shut down in Ohio, pretty much the country. I'm in Ohio, I'm in Cleveland. And so I had all these supplies. I had no jobs. Everyone was panicking because the kids were not going to be in school. And I made a post and I said, would you guys like me to do some free online classes? So they all shared it. And I went from 2000 followers to 30,000 followers in a couple of days. And then I have my first online live art class on Monday, March 16th of 2020 with 20,000 people watching around the around the world, really, mostly in the United States, but all over. People were asking me what time zone I was in. It was amazing. I had no idea what I was doing. I barely still can work social media, but I'm doing my best. So, all right, I forgot to put the black paint on the. So I'm not even going to worry about the leaves right now. I'm going to do uh, the black tree and then I'll add my colored leaves. So look, I started, I love color. I love color so much. So this is, uh, I'm going to go back to the heavy body paint, but that's how heavy it is. It's thick and it doesn't run, right? So I, I actually, it doesn't really matter. Maybe I will do the color right now. So you guys, I wanted to show you first. So that was the fine point Sharpie, okay? That's the one I definitely use the most. But I also have all the other sizes, okay? And so I have these two. This is the one Sharpie that I don't recommend. It's not in my carousel. Here's why I don't like it. I love the fine point of the double-sided Sharpie, but the lid falls off a lot, especially if you teach kids. You'll find the cap loose. Even myself, you guys, I'll like not have it tightened. So, so many times the fine point is still good, but that little fine point at the end, because I don't cap it tight enough or I lose the cap as I like put it in my cup. So I have some of these, but I, I tend to not buy them. I'll buy the multi-pack more and the one I use the most, I keep, <laughs> I keep hitting this. These are the ones, the fine point. Okay. So I use those fine point ones the most and 463, you guys, those are on sale. Um, so anyway, I use those all the time. The fine point ones. I keep clicking the wrong phone. That's the problem with having two phones, you guys. All right, let's try this again. All right, so this is my fine point Sharpie, but this is the one that I'm not going to recommend because I feel like this little cap falls off too easily, especially when you're like me, a bull in a china shop. So my favorite Sharpie is the fine point with just the one end. That way you just have to cap it, whether it's you using it or if you're using it with kids. I would definitely not use it with ages five and up only. Because again, it's a permanent marker. You really don't want to breathe too much of that in as a child. So again, I'm just real lightly sketching it out. And then once you get it to where you like it, you can start doing your leaves. If you feel better with drawing your leaves on first, you can. You can do the black. But I'm going to, since I already put the colors of the acrylic paint on my plate, I'm going to go to that. So acrylic paint, you guys, dry, dries really quick. I like it thick and I like it opaque. Opaque means you cannot see through it. So I'm going to go back to my paint from the beginning. So this is Arteza. I have 24 colors here. I'll show you guys. That's, that's it right there. So again, if you're on Amazon with me, you're going to see the exact products that I'm using. Here's my box right there. Okay. So what I'm going to do here on my tree is I like to paint from light to dark. And you can use any size brush that you want. I know this is another thing people love for me to tell them what size brush to use. And it just depends on what size canvas you're working on. Or maybe you're using a sketchbook 
or a drawing pad. So you really have to uh, like adjust according to what you're doing. And also the size of your hand and your fine motor ability, right? So you don't have to use the same size brush that I'm using. This is, and not all paintbrushes you guys have numbers on them. So I would just, again, experiment, see what you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to start, I'm going to go uh, like light to dark, but I'm going to add to it also. So this is a really bright, pretty yellow. Have the leaves started changing colors by you guys? They just started here. They just started changing colors. Tell me, what's your favorite fall color? Do you have a fall favorite color? Is it orange or burgundy or red? Brown? Is it brown? I don't have too many people that's, that tell me their favorite color is brown. Although I love the Cleveland Browns. Go Browns. We won last Thursday. That was a good game. Did you watch it on Amazon Live? I did. Yay. It was a good game. And you guys, they just announced the next uh, Prime Days, October 10th and 11th. Okay, so I will be sharing with you guys some fun finds for the Amazon Prime Days. So make sure you follow me, please. Just hit the follow button. And I will share with you guys more fun finds on Amazon for our next fall Amazon Prime Days. So again, I'm just kind of sprinkling some, because we're talking football, right? These leaves are like football shapes, almost like the shape of an almond. And I'm just turning them different directions. And again, you can use whatever colors you want. You can use all warm colors. So warm colors are yellow and orange and red. So I'm going to go to orange next. I didn't even wash off my brush. I just went right into it because I like when the colors mix with each other. There's orange. Put another orange one over here. Put an orange one over here. You can have it go right off the page. If you mix the yellow and the orange together, you're going to get a yellow orange like macaroni and cheese. That's what I used to tell the kids. This is like a macaroni and cheese yellow orange. So it's really fun to mix colors too. You just, again, have to... Uh, not be afraid, right? Just do it. Just do it. So art's like anything else. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. We're not going for fun, fine art here. We're going for fun art. That's my feeling. Again, this is really just for fun and to make it, I'm going to put a little yellow in it just so you can see what I'm talking about. See how it turns into that like macaroni and cheese, yellow, orange color. So it's fun to experiment. I'll make one go off the page up here. And the key to this, see that? The key is just to add really fun, bright colors. Maybe you want it to be a little bit more neutral. You can do browns and burgundies and reds or because you can customize it and do whatever you want, especially if you have 24 colors. And if you want to mix, right? So now you're getting an idea of how thick this paint is because it's very opaque. It's covering up and I'll even show you too on the sharp. Let's see, I'll go over the Sharpie a little bit. How about right here? I'll go over it a little bit. Do you see how it covered up the marker? That's because it's really opaque paint. That means it's thick and you can't see through it. So that's why it's not like going to matter if you make a mistake. And acrylic paint dries quick. All right, now I'm going to jump into the red. So I'm not even going to wash off my brush. I'm just going to go right into the red paint. I'm going to start. Isn't that a pretty red? That's a really pretty red. So now I'm using all warm colors. So red, orange, and yellow are all warm colors. And again, I'm making these 
nice football shapes. Are you guys into football? <laughs> hey, Andy, how are you? Do I have a beard like Bob Ross? <laughs> You're funny. So, again, these almond shaped leaves here. So, it's a happy little tree, right? And if you make it an accident, it can be a happy little accident tree. So, we have Andy on Amazon. A lot of people don't realize that you can go live on Amazon. So I'm trying to multitask here. I'm live on Facebook and Amazon and YouTube. All right. So I'm going to, again, I'm adding these football like shapes. And the goal is to fill a lot of the white in. You can leave little white spaces or you can fill it in and you can use, if you love purples and blues, purple, blue, and green, those are cool colors. Red, orange, and yellow, those are warm colors. You don't have to stick to one color theme, but if you want to, you could. So I always encourage you to think outside the box and do what you like. So again, if you don't like the colors that I'm using, don't use them, use your own colors. Use your own color scheme, make it your own. Hey, CJ. Thank you for following me, CJ. You guys, so they just announced the next Amazon Prime days, October 10th. Is it a week? Is it a week? Am I getting the dates right? Uh, next week. Can you believe it's going to be October? All right. If you're watching live, you guys, September's wrapping up. Uh, if you're watching this live, it's recorded too, but right now we're live and September is ending. Thank you so much. Hello. I love this tree and I also love the colors you're using. Thank you so much. So I appreciate it. And hi, Tina Hit Green. And hi, Renee and Sharon. So isn't that Tina Green? Green, I'm going to have to use green for your name. How about that? All right, so thank you so much for loving the colors. I'm Again, I'm using these warm colors. This red is actually called crimson. It's really pretty. It's like a deep red. So those, again, are all warm colors. But I'm going to use a combination of warm and cool colors, okay? So I have, I like to use my red Solo cups to rinse out my paint brushes. So I just have water in there. Okay, I wish it was something else. <laughs> I'm drinking water though, okay? So um, I have water in my cup, so I'm gonna rinse it off now. So I did not wash off my brush one time. So I went from yellow to orange to red. But now that I'm gonna switch to cool colors, which I only have green on my plate. I got sidetracked, does that ever happen to you? I was getting, I was prepping, getting everything ready. And then guess what happened? I knocked things over. Then I was like scrambling. And before I knew it, it was time to go live. So now I'm going to dip in the green. So I washed off my brush and I dried it off. If I didn't dry it off and I took the wet brush into the paint, it would thin it down. So it would be a thinner consistency, almost like watercolor. If you want it to be transparent, you can water it down. But I don't want it to be transparent. I want mine to be opaque not transparent. So that's why you want to dry it off, right? You want to wash it off and you want to dry it off. Hi, Susan. How are you? Oh, I didn't, you know, I kind of thought it was you, Susan, but it says Amazon customer. So I see that it's you because you said Susan. So thank you. You're too kind. Always, always kind words. Susan's one of our customers, members. She's been creating with me for a couple of years now, right? So I was telling them the story about how I went uh, live on social media and you were one of my first people all the way in Texas. Susan lives in Texas. So it was interesting because I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, Eastern Standard Time. And when I said, okay, I'm going to go live and do some art, 
on social media, people were like, what time zone are you in? And I was like, what time zone? I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. I just thought everybody was in Cleveland, Ohio, right? And nope, I found out, no, it, it went all over the country. And then the first week that we were live, we had people from South Africa, from Jamaica, from Spain. They were all over, not just all over the country. They were all over the world. It was amazing. I think I cried on camera. Right. It was just amazing. So one would think a couple of years later, I'd be a little bit better in technology. Not much. I've learned a little bit. <laughs> I'm still learning every day. I'm learning. I have glitches. So I. Uh, anyway, I'm making all these. Pretty leaves, right? You do, and yours don't have to be the shape of almonds. They could be whatever you want. I just think it's fun to be bright and colorful. I love fall. I love summer the most, okay, but I love fall. I, I love pumpkin spice. I love autumn colors. I do love the beautiful trees. They just started to change. Susan says... Let me hold the phone up at the comments. So Susan says, it's been a fun and artistic adventure. So glad I found you two years ago. I've learned so much more to learn. You know what, Andy? Andy says, why don't I hold an easel? All right, Andy, I have an easel here. And Andy, you know what? I'm here, I have an easel right here. That's what I usually do tonight. I was like, oh, let me hold it because I wanted it to be a little bit closer. And Susan knows sometimes um, like here, I have my little easel here. This is actually, all right, you guys. And I put these flowers out. Someone gave me flowers. So I put too much on my table, but I couldn't decide what, look at how pretty they are. Oh, and they smell so good. So again, when you're, when you're not sure what to paint, just find something around your house and, and, do a drawing or a sketch of it. And Andy asked me why I am not. Now, I'm not going to knock these over, you guys. Susan knows I'm kind of a bull in a china shop. But um, I usually do use easels, whether they're table easels or standing easels. I actually have it in my carousel. Thanks, Andy, for reminding me. So there's my easel. Well, that's not very big, is it? But I have it in the carousel. I just hide it. This is U.S. Supply. It's a table easel. I have over a hundred of them. Okay. And they're for my paint parties. They're certain. Well, I guess I should show you first. Super durable. Okay. And he said, why am I not using an easel? Well, really I filled up my table with so much stuff, but this, you guys, they're super durable. Okay. They fold up nicely. They have these nice little rubber pads on the bottom of them. Okay. You can tell I use mine all the time. I don't cover mine. Uh, because I like that they get dirty. I think it adds character to the easel. I've seen people actually put like masking tape across the bottom so that when they're done, they can just pull it off and it stays nice and neat and clean. Again, I like the paint on it. You could tell that you've been using it, right? So these little ears here are great to hold your canvas. So if your canvas is horizontal, it'll hold it. You can, if you have a taller canvas, you can put your little ears up like that. Okay, I don't want to drop my canvas off my lap because it's wet. What else you can do? So I've done parties outside. So if you're outside and it's windy, which it's happened, you can actually put these little clips under the back of the canvas where the wood is and it'll hold it on there. So these are table easels. I also have lots of standing easels, but I wanted to do the table one today. So I'm going to go to make Andy happy and do, there was no reason other than being up close, Andy, was I, that was why I was holding it. Okay. But I, let's move to the easel. Does that make it better? It was just, here's the thing. There was so much that I wanted to share with you guys and I was running out of room. <laughs> so, okay. Let's go back to our paint. How about that? Or, yeah. Well, Okay, where am I going to put this now? I don't, I don't really need the sharpeners anymore, do I? See what I mean? See, Andy? Avalanche. All right, let, how about that? 
but now I need to open my box. See, I've had two years to figure this stuff out and I still haven't figured it out. When I watch other people stream, they're so, they don't make such a mess, right? Everything's so organized and, and it looks so nice. I started with the blue and somehow I didn't finish. So this, I'm going to use some ultramarine blue. Again, here's my styrofoam plate. And what am I showing you guys now? Okay, here's some canvases, right? So you guys, I'm showing you canvases, but you can use oil paint, acrylic paint, and watercolor paint. So that's what I'm showing you now. So if you're on Amazon, you can see the canvases. I'm still going to use the um, Arteza acrylics. I'm going to put some blue on my plate. And this blue is, mm, it's too dark. I want, I had a brighter blue. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, there it is. You guys are, all right, see, I told, all right. I'm, the reason why I don't want to use such a dark blue, I don't want it to look like my black, right? So my, I want to do my tree black. Now, if you wanted to change it, make your tree brown, you could, but I don't want to have such a dark blue. This blue I like better for this project. This is cobalt blue. So do you see how much lighter it is? I, I don't want the dark blue to take away from my tree. Okay, so let's go back to, this is the cobalt blue. And I'm just gonna add more leaves. And again, you can make your leaves any color any size, any shape. So right now I'm leaving a white space in between. Can you see that? And you don't have to have your painting done in one sitting, right? You can just work on it whenever you want, whenever you have time. You know, it's really nice to paint before you go to bed, just to calm down, practice mindfulness, right? So what do you think? You like it better as I, that I'm on the easel instead of holding it? You, again, usually, you guys, usually I'm standing. This may be like the first time that I've actually sat while I was doing this. So you tell me what you like. Do you like when I sit? Do you like when I stand? Do you like to see the whole easel? Hey, Jayla. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Thank you, Jayla. Jayla said, that's such a beautiful painting. Thank you, Jayla. You can make one too. So I'm just sharing all of my favorite supplies with you guys. I am a certified art teacher. I taught art in Cleveland for over 20 years. I began my own paint and sip party in 2015. And when COVID hit, I went virtual like so many other people and I am still doing a lot of virtual projects. I'm doing more virtual than I am in person and, and I love doing in person and I love doing virtual. Okay. So really I could have pajama bottoms on right now. So I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. It's 20 to 10. You guys, it's dark so early. That's another thing I'm not fond of is how short the days have become, right? So it's dark early. And I'm sick of watching TV. So I decided to come and share some of my favorite finds with you guys. And, you know, you can even mix. So maybe I take some of that blue and that some of that green and see what color I get. It's just an experiment, right? So it's, it turns into like a darker green. Did you see that? And you can just fill the whole thing up with whatever colors you want. Let's try. How about a yellow green? So it's already starting to dry my paint on my plate. 
So don't put too much on there to start with, because if you guys, um, if it's warm where you are or the air is dry, it's going to dry pretty quick. Acrylic paint dries pretty quick. Now it's, today was 50 degrees, but I have the heat on in the house. So with the heat on, there's not a lot of moisture. So my paint is drying even more quick. So really, so much of it depends on the humidity level. Now, outside, it's pretty humid. It's been raining all day long, but I have the windows closed because it's cold and the heat is on. So again, my paint on my plate is already starting to dry. But I like the, the mixed look when the colors mix together. Oh, I know. See that I put a magenta on there too. I forgot about the magenta. Let's jump into the magenta before it gets dried up. All right, so let's see what the magenta looks like. Can you see that? And if it doesn't look different than red, I'll put a little bit of white in there, but it's more of a fuchsia magenta pink. It's really hard to get the exact look of colors. Have you ever ordered something like a rug or a shirt and you get it and the color doesn't look the same as on camera? So it's it's hard for me to you know share with you what it actually looks like in person versus what it looks like. It's close, but like that magenta is much more pink than it is right on the camera. On the camera, to me, it, it looks almost red. Now, what could I do to lighten that pink up? I could add some white to it. So Annie just said, let's see if I can do this so I don't look down. I remember one of the first Bob Ross's videos I watched with him painting a dead tree, and he said, Death was normal and not to be feared. I thought, wow, what a, a philosopher and painter. That's so true, right? And also, you know, fall to me is symbolic of letting things go, right? Just like the beautiful leaves. So the beautiful green leaves are turning colors, all beautiful colors. I love it. And then they're gone. They fall off the tree and it's a time to let go and reflect and then hibernate, <laughs> right? And then that's what we do in Cleveland and then spring. So I do love the cycle of life. I do love, you know, the different seasons. As I'm getting older, I'm a little less tolerant of snow. Oh, I was going to show you guys. See, I'm getting sidetracked. Andy got me thrown off there. Get me all philosophical. All right, and there goes my painting. And there I go, making a mess. You guys know, I'm making a mess. All right, let's see. I know I have a white in here. Okay, so what I was going to do is put a little bit of white in here. And I'm going to need the black, too. And I'm going to have some purple. Where's my black? Anyway, okay. See, it's more fun if I have all this stuff out, but. <laughs> oh, you guys, this is this is how I make a mess all the time. You guys want to hear a funny story? What happened the other day? The other day. Hey, my young son, my young son, thank you for following me. Um, so the other day, all right, where's my batteries? I got to put my batteries in my carousel. Hold on. I got to show you my batteries. Cause the, I was like, Oh, I'm going to stream about my Duracell batteries. You guys, you need to have batteries in your house. Okay. So what's the worst thing that happens in your house when you don't have batteries? Your remote control runs out, right? Oh my gosh. How about your remote control runs out of juice and you can't find batteries? Does that ever happen to you? Is it just me or does that happen to you? Okay. And then what I do, I run around the house looking for double A's. What has double A's in that I can, rock, you know, like steal from? So anyway, I don't want to. All right, you guys, I know. Look at how bad I open it. But it's so funny because I will literally run around the house 
and look for something to steal the batteries out of, to put them in my remote if I lose power in my remote and I can't find batteries, right? So now I always have my jumbo pack of batteries. Now, what else do I need batteries for? I need them for my fire uh, detector, for my fire alarm detector. And you guys, this is so important. This is the funny part that happened to me the other day when I was streaming. So we have had some bad weather here in Cleveland. Just a lot of, I know Susan in Texas, you guys have had some bad weather too. So I was streaming and I'm like, all right, so between the remote control that I need my double A's for, I need them for flashlight. Flashlight. So in case we lose power, I need a flashlight, especially if it's at nighttime. I want a flash night light in my nightstand. And what's worse, you have you can find your flashlight and it doesn't have charged batteries, and then your flashlight won't work, right? How bad is that? Because I don't use a flashlight that often. So I was streaming the other day and I was talking about batteries and I was talking about flashlights and I was talking about having them work. And during my live stream, we lost power. Can you believe that? Right in the middle of my battery thing. So I'm super happy that we didn't lose power tonight. Although it's been rainy. Okay. It did hail earlier and things blew over on my deck, but it was like the exact same time I was talking about batteries. All of a sudden the light started flickering and boop, lost power. Crazy. So you guys always need batteries. That's the moral of the story. Okay. Now I'm adding, let me go back to my paint. Sometimes I go, sometimes I go off on a tangent, right? There you go. All right. Let's go back to our Arteza. All right. So now I'm mixing the magenta and the white. And again, I'm not using a lot of paint because, oh, that's too light though. Can you see that? It's like a pink. I'm going to take a little bit more magenta. So I want, I don't want it to look like my red. I want it to look pink. Does that look more pink? So all I did was add white. So if you want your paint to be more pastel, you can add white to your colors. And then you're going to have a more pastel look to it. And they can overlap each other if you want them to. You can experiment and mix any colors that you want to. People love to paint with black first thing because it's so it's so dark and dramatic, right? So let's see. So I told you, so that was just a couple days ago when I was live talking about batteries and the power went out. I will also tell you, and I'm not sharing the video, but one time on camera, I passed out, you guys. It was bad. And I, I mean... I passed out on camera. No, I wasn't totally out, but I went down timber like a tree. Okay. And um, Susan was actually watching live that day. She called. She was so worried about me. I don't know what was going on. I think I was having a hot flash or something, but I went down. There were lamps for lighting around me. You could hear the lights breaking and I could not get to the mouse to shut off the camera. So in the last two and a half years of all the streaming that I've done, that was, that was the worst. My sisters tell me I should release it and it would go viral. It's too embarrassing. So it's, it's hidden. I still have it, but it's hidden. Maybe one day I'll share with you guys. But um, yeah, you just never know when you're live, what's going to happen. Right. And that is part of the fun and excitement of it. Oh, and there's Susan. She's like, we were so glad you were okay. Can you believe that was a couple years ago already? It's crazy. 
Yes, I was okay. If you saw the video, you would have thought that I was not okay. My easel took a beating. <laughs> My easel, I had this beautiful wooden Italian easel and I had lamps set up on both sides. And I'm telling you, the room looked like a tornado hit it. I had, there was like, you know, everything was broken, right? The lamps were broken and the easel was broken. But that's the only time that ever happened. And I went to the doctor and got checked out. And they're like, nothing's wrong with you. And I was thankful. I was very thankful. But it was just a very strange occurrence. So, again, you never know, right, when you're live. So if you guys want to fill those white spaces up, you could do that. Again, so like in here. Or I could just keep going and adding more leaves at any point you can change anything right but i think you know whether you're outline let's see so let's say i want to maybe i want to outline this green and the paint is drying see that so and then i could even just keep outlining it or i could just keep going maybe put a little yellow around here Maybe add a little yellow over here. There's no plan, right? We're just we're just having fun and mixing colors. Let's try some more of this red over here. I can, can you see that? And now I'm going to have to oh, look at that. So my, you guys, just so you know, so my white, which was right here, is already dry. That's how quick this stuff can dry. So that's why I don't want, <laughs> yeah, Andy says, who said painting wasn't exciting? Yeah, no kidding. So I haven't invested yet in another one of those Italian easels. So I stick with my metal ones, right? Uh, my, my nice black metal ones. This was like a really nice. I just got it too. I, I had only used it a handful of times. It was a beautiful, heavy wood standing easel. It was exciting and scary. So again, you really want to get rid of some of that white space. You don't want it to take over too much of your painting. And you don't want to, if again, if it's if it's not very humid where you are and you have the heat on, your paint's going to dry pretty quick. So don't waste it. Don't put too much on your plate at one time, especially if you're using like a heavy body paint, which is what I'm using. It's very thick and it dries quick, but it's super opaque and the pigment is very rich. So the colors are really, really nice. Let's see, should I try that dark blue? Maybe if I mix the dark blue here, like, can you see that? See, I just don't wanna, it won't have the contrast against the black tree. And if you don't wanna do a black tree, you don't have to. Again, you can make it brown or a different color, but I don't wanna do it until I'm done with all my colors because I don't wanna get that black in the leaves. Now, again, I could have started with the black, but then I have to be even more careful to not bump into it as I'm painting around it because you don't want to get black in your pretty bright colors. The black is just going to enhance the entire painting. It's just going to make everything pop out. Now, what I could do, I could do the black and then move on and then come back to it just so you guys can see it. Let me find my black or brown, or maybe we mix. Maybe we mix black and brown. I just like the look of the black because it's so bold. Ooh, this is Mars black. You see that Mars black? 
Hey, Jayla, thank you for following me. Thank you so much. You guys, you're so nice to me. You're a, you're a good painter. That was from Jayla. Thank you so much. I appreciate your kind words. You guys, I love chatting with you guys. So is it cold and windy where you are? Because it's cold and windy here. That's why I was like, I'm staying home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he said, All right. So there was a little spelling error and someone uh, said, um, you're a food painter. and it, But it was a good painter. So it was a mistake. I've have I, you know what? I have never painted food, but you know what I have painted? I've painted pumpkins. Okay. I have painted pumpkins before. And actually I'm going to, let me get this black done. And I'm going to show you guys some multi-surface paint, which is actually awesome on pumpkins. Although I don't have a pumpkin here, but when you're talking about painting food, I'm thinking about, well, I'm thinking about eating food, but it's one of my favorite things to do. And, um, and I do love pumpkins. Okay. So now I'm going to use the black. So I want to do it before it dries. Now watch just how much this is going to change the painting. I'm going right over that Sharpie line too. You see that? It's just going to make everything stand out. Now remember the branches are thinner as you work your way out, right? And it gets thicker as you come in. See that? Susan says it's finally almost fall. Nice cool breeze this evening. That's good. Yeah, it just literally in one day it dropped 30 degrees. And it's been, if you guys watched, so did you watch the football game? It was uh, Thursday night on Amazon, a lot like football. And it was the Cleveland Browns. And we, it was cold. They had, people had gloves on, uh, especially the sports announcers, but it was a good game. And we won. We won. If you don't know, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. So we could really use a winning football team this year. Indians are doing great. All right. So can you see just amazing how it just changed with that bold black? That's why people want to jump into it. A lot of times if I'm doing a paint party, I don't give them black till the end because they want to start with it. Again, you can always start with it, but it, you have to be patient and let it dry because if you bump into it, you're going to get your colors muddied. You want your colors to be vibrant, right? So I'm just painting right over that Sharpie line. And I'll decide later how much of it I want to fill in with color and how much of it I want to leave white. And you guys can do this on any size canvas. You can use any size paint brushes. I'm using acrylics because, again, these are really a, a nice, heavy bodied, beautiful pigment. You know what? Susan wants to see what the dark brown looks like. So let's 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 give it a shot. How about that? So this I have the Mars black and I have some burnt sienna here. So let's give it a shot. For Susan, this is for you. I'll show you the difference, okay? And you guys tell me what you think. So I'm I'm not even gonna wash off my brush. I'm just gonna. What do you think? I'm going to mix the brown in here. And you tell me. So what's the worst that Susan knows this because she's painted with me for a long time. What's the worst that can happen if I don't like it? Paint over it, right? So I'm just black. You can paint over anything. Tracy says she likes it. Thanks, Tracy. So you like the brown better than the black? Do you like them mixed together? It's like an experiment, isn't it? I like to experiment. 
Okay, the, what's the worst that can happen? You paint over it, right? So when you're creating with acrylic paint, you just want to let it dry. Now black, you don't really have to worry about, but if I made a really bad mistake, like let's say I wanted to paint over that red and orange because I didn't like it. I like it, but I'm just saying pretend you didn't like it. Let it dry and then you can paint over it. So the key is to letting it dry. So many people don't have the patience, including myself. And then, you know, they want to just paint over it while it's wet and it won't cover it. Like anything, like even doing your nails, right? You want to let it, your first coat dry. Well, if you, you know, want to cover it, just let it dry. So you like the brown. Do you like the two-tone look? Or do you want the whole thing to be brown? I'm going to go to a thinner brush. The dark brown isn't too bad. I kind of like it. The black is good too. That's Susan saying that. So, you know, again, we're experimenting. So the brown is a warmer look. The black is a bolder look, right? not right or wrong it's just different there's no right or wrong that's the best thing about art someone asked me the other day <laughs> Andy says brown is the new black so you guys I I've been creating art most of my life I would say someone was asking me questions about you know when I started creating and I will tell you that I loved drawing as a child I wasn't great you know I was not a Vincent Van Gogh uh, but I I just found a lot of enjoyment in drawing sometimes I would be sketching when I was in school and I wouldn't be paying attention to the teacher and so my dad died when I was 10 years old. Unexpectedly, he had a heart attack. He was 36. I was 10. And all I can tell you is that I found art extremely therapeutic. Not knowing it was therapeutic, but, you know, because I'm 10 years old. I actually became very introverted. I was afraid to leave my house. I was so afraid that my mom was going to die. and. I had two sisters. I'm the middle, the middle rebellious, typical art, artist child, right? And um, I really found a lot of comfort in creating. And people would buy me like art kits. I was also into like the latch hook. Back then, I can't even remember what you called it. But boy, I love that. The latch hook with the yarn. I love just sketching. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember painting a lot as a child, more again, just drawing, coloring, crayons, markers, and taking art classes. And then when I got to high school, again, I took every art class I possibly could. I just loved it so much. I never really took my academics seriously. And my mother... I did not really like school except for art. And my mother said, you're going, all three of you are going to college. I don't care where you go and I don't care what you do, but you are going to college. It's not an option. And I was like, I'm not going to college. I'm not going to college. And she's like, oh, you are going to college. Now, my mom's half my size. I don't know how she made me go to college, <laughs> but she did. So I went to, but again, I still, even through high school, I still had that fear of leaving home. And my both my sisters went away to college, but I didn't. I went to the Cleveland Institute of Art right down the street from where I lived. I drove to school every day. And I 
wanted to major in painting, but my mom said, you'll never get a job. You need to get a job. So I majored in graphic design. I was in graphic design for one year. Oh my gosh, on a computer. And if you know me, I don't like computers. I'm not really good at computers. So I, I had a job for as a graphic designer for one year. Wasn't a fan. Went and worked at the mall. I sold makeup at the mall. It was way more fun. Way more fun. And I knew I couldn't work at the mall and sell makeup forever. So I went back. My little sister's a teacher. She encouraged me to become a teacher. So I went back and got my master's in art education and I became an art teacher. And I taught in the city of Cleveland for over 20 years. And I would, you know, a lot of the kids, even today, you know, come from broken homes, right? And so I want to tell you what Andy says. Andy says, painting is good therapy. Many psychiatrists let children paint instead of talking because they are too young to articulate their feelings. I couldn't agree with you more, Andy. A absolutely. That's just so true. And so what do you guys think about the two-tone look here? Um, oh, boy, I lost my train of thought. Shocking, I know. But absolutely, um, you know, I don't think back then we really, well, maybe they did have therapy, but my mom would always say, you know, well, I didn't know. I didn't know anything about therapy. And um, really, I never thought about it. And it's not like there were school therapists who said, oh, you need therapy. But um, even my master's, I got my master's at Case Western Reserve, which is a Cleveland college. And I became a Cleveland art teacher. Oh, and that's what I was telling you was, you know, I shared with the kids my story because a lot of the kids did come from broken homes. And, you know, I told them what joy I found in art. But the hardest part is not worrying about what other people are going to say about it or being the best artist. And the hardest part for me as a teacher was grading the kids because everybody, I said, all you have to do is give me some effort and you're going to get a good grade. That's all I wanted was effort, right? So Susan says, seeing them side by side, she likes the black better. So the black, again, the difference between the brown and the black is that it's more bold, right? It's the black definitely is more bold. And look, I did both of them and they have a totally different look. So if I want, I can just go right over the brown. Now, if I, again, was patient, I could patiently wait for it to dry or I can just do it. Now, some of the areas are a little bit thicker than others, so. And I definitely did this one a little bit more heavy handed, right? So it's a little bit thicker. And I'll probably need a little bit more black paint. So then I started my own business in 2015. I wanted to expand beyond the classroom. I, I love one of my favorite things to do is travel and look at art around the world. And I still love to teach people how to paint and draw and create. So again, I'm not sure. So you guys, the video, so I just want you to know I'm streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Amazon. So when this is done, the recording will be on all three of those platforms, okay? So you can see this on any one of those. Now, the nice thing about the Amazon is that you can see all the products that I'm using even though I haven't talked about a lot. Of, I've been talking about a lot of stuff tonight. I don't know, you guys. 
You guys got me going tonight. All right. So yeah, so it's this is going to be recorded. Well, it's recorded. Right now we're live, but it will be recorded. And if you're watching the recording, join us live sometime, you guys, because it's fun to chat with us. Right? That's the fun part. Imagine Bob Ross being able to chat with you live. How cool would that be? All right, I'm going to put a little bit more black on. And then we're going to let it dry. And I'll come back to it. How's that? Try to cover up that brown since you guys like the black better. So it's a little two-tone. We can leave it two-tone. Maybe I add. So you guys, you could add more branches. You could, I've seen people put a swing in. You could put like a little swing at the bottom. How's that? I could add more branches. So actually, are you? Tina says she likes the two tone. Thanks, Tina. Um, so I'm going to leave, I'll leave the two. So you guys are about like 50, 50. Some of you like it, the two tone. So let's just leave it. How about like that? Let's leave it and let it dry. So during COVID, I went live March, April. I said, oh, you guys, I'm going to do free classes until COVID's over. I thought COVID would be over in a week. <laughs> what did I know? So I did, uh, and Susan was with me. March, April, and May, every day, I called it learn, lunch and learn, because again, you know, I didn't realize people were from all over the place, and uh, anyway. So, let's see. All right, what was, all right, so we're going to let this dry. So, let me see, I have a few more things in my, um, I, I want to tell you guys, because I'm slipping off my chair right now and I have special cushions on my chair. So I'm gonna share them with you. If you're on Amazon with me, you'll be able to see them. And then I'll move on and share other things. They're probably way at the end, but I thought I would share them with you right now because they're on my mind. They're actually on my behind. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. All right, you guys, this is again, if you're, if you are, um, this is what I'm sitting on. Okay, it looks like a pancake right now, look. This is so awesome. All right. So this is, oh boy, let me pull it up on my phone so um, I can actually read it to you guys. All right. So this is called Everlasting Comfort. Um, and it's actually 29% off. It's $29.99. Okay, I paid more for I paid more for it. Oh, you can't even see my head. So I paid more for this than it's on sale right now. All right. So this, you guys, is so awesome. So I actually didn't buy it for my chair that I'm sitting in right now. I actually bought it for travel. So I have been um, going to Florida, and this is so awesome for the drive. So this part, I actually have to tell, be honest with you, the first time I used it, I, I sat on it the wrong way. So this actually goes into the back of the chair like this. So your bum kind of goes over that part, but I didn't know. So I was driving from Florida and I had it sitting like this, almost like the toilet seat. And my, it, don't do that because it doesn't feel good. I was like, this is not, but it is really actually very comfortable, especially for a long drive. Uh, but make sure you have it going in the correct direction. Okay. So that's just kind of like a funny little thing. So again, this is great for sitting. My mom uses it when she comes over. 
but make sure when you have it on your chair, so it goes like this. So this is the front of your body here, and this is the back side. So your, your tuchus is right over this part, okay? And then I also have, so this is, again, I highly recommend this for back support for, oh, well, this is the, the butt one, sorry. <laughs> I have a back support one too, which is on my chair right here. Okay, oops, I gotta move it on my carousel. You know how hard it is to have two phones? Woo! All right, so this one, you guys, is on the back of my chair. This is also really awesome. I, I gotta duck down now. See what happens when I stand up? All right, so this is great for your back, and it has straps. So you could put it on your uh, seat in your car. I had mine on my chair right here, and it's got adjustable straps and buckles. But it's such a nice support. So again, when I'm driving long distances, I have it with me. And I tonight I have it on my chair. So it just uh, makes my back and my bottom feel really good. So a really nice support. Oop, here's it on Amazon too. So it's lumbar pillows. And then it says instant back pain relief, dual adjustable straps, keeps your back cool and dry. Yeah, that, oh, of course, not. you can't see my head. But that's the nice part, too, is it doesn't make me hot and sweaty. So I really like it. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you guys what I've been sitting on and leaning on on my chair. Okay. All right, what else do I have in my, in my cart tonight? So I'm le letting my painting dry while we do this, but I want to share with you guys a few more things. So where do I know it? This is a really, really, really fun paint. Now it's, it's very small. It's one of my favorites. Let me get it. Got it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So these are called neon nights. You ready for this? God only knows where I put them. Hold on. All right, let me see. I always say I'm going to get myself a real art studio because you know what? I'm screaming in my bedroom. All right, so this is the Neon Nights paint. All right, the nice thing about this is it glows. So not only is it neon, but it glows. It's super cool. All right, I have it here somewhere. Maybe I set this aside for right now. We're going to let this dry. All right, we're going to put our jellyfish up. These are our glowing jellyfish. Okay, I have them in a couple different sizes here. Now, these, you guys, I did on black canvas, okay? So this is black canvas. It's super cool. And I have the Neon Knights paint here somewhere. I'm going to find it. I kind of have a mess going on. Hold on. Let me see if I can find my Neon Knights. I'll even shut the light off while I'm searching for the paint. I, You know, I try, you guys, to be so organized. Well, let me shut the light off. Can you see it glowing? How fun is that? Super fun, right? All right. Well, I have it here somewhere. Uh oh, you hear me talking on something. Probably my phone. <laughs> All right. So there's my neon lights. Can you see them? All right. And again, I have the paint. Oh, here it is. I might, I might have buried it, but it's here. <laughs> Ah, uh, you guys. All right, so here's my neon knives. Woo, look at that. So it's they're much smaller. They come in eight colors. You don't need a lot for this, um, for the paint. So it's really nice, too, to embellish your artwork, maybe little details. It's also much more transparent. So tonight I was talking a lot about the opaqueness of the acrylic paint. So this is much more transparent but it's neon and it glows right 
So I just want you to understand, uh, yeah, the difference. And hey, Harmony. Yeah, I finally found it. That's why I wanted you guys to see it. So this would be really, really fun to add details to something. And I'm going to keep streaming, uh, you know, again, you follow me and you'll get the next notice, but I'm going to be doing a lot of pumpkins and ghosts and other cool. I have a scarecrow painting, but this would be really nice to add just little pieces that glow in the dark, right? So it doesn't have to be the entire painting. Jellyfish are transparent in general. So I thought that that was fun to do. Uh, this is such a fun, really nice paint. When I go to paint parties, I don't um, do the entire painting with the neon paint. I usually add on top of the acrylic. So the whole painting would be done in an acrylic and then maybe we outline it with the neon nights. And again, remember when you're layering, you want the paint underneath to be dry. So if even the tree, let's just say tonight we do the tree. If you want your tree to glow, you can do that. You know, another one would be like a Christmas tree. That would be really fun. So in, tonight we did a regular tree. I don't know what kind of, we're doing an autumn tree, but let's say you make a Christmas tree and you could do like little lights on the Christmas tree. So all the little lights would be the neon paint. And so your tree would glow like it had lights on it, right? So that's just one of many, many ideas, but we're going to do more things um, using the neon light. So definitely follow so you can watch that one as well. I'm going to turn the light back on and I'm just going to show you how you can use it a little bit. I wish I had a remote to turn my light on. All right, light again. As I'm climbing over all the stuff, right? All the stuff that I'm climbing over. All right, so now the light's on. You don't need a black light for this. If you have a black light, it'll be glow even more, but it's not necessary. I don't have a black light, okay? So let's just take out... Um, one of these. So there's eight colors in here. And again, they're little. They're these little bottles. Okay. So I want you to see little bottle, turn cap. So what I like to do for bubbles is you can paint the rim of the cap and then press it to get a nice little circle for like bubbles. So again, you could paint the cap and then press to make a bubble. So tonight I'm going to just go over, let's see, I need a little brush. So you want to mix it up. So you just take your little neon paint and mix it up a little bit here. And then I'm going to go over it like that. So it, it is pretty transparent. So this would be one coat. Can you see that? But this would be two. So as you layer it, it becomes more opaque. I can't believe it's almost 1030. We've been streaming for almost an hour and a half. I got to drink some water. I got a big jug of water here. Ah, man, I've been talking for an hour and a half. So. Have you guys ever lost your voice from too much talking? So the consistency of this is much thinner than the other paint that I was using. So when I would use this, I definitely would do it flat. You can see when I was doing it, it was up on an easel and it started to drip. Now it's already dry there, so I could cover it with black paint, but it's a much thinner paint and it does glow. But I would do it as you're creating, I would do it flat. And then if you want the little tiny dots, what I like to do is dip the handle. So dip the handle in your paint. Don't make it too thick because, again, then it's going to drip. And you just dip and dot, dip and dot, dip and dot. Can you see that? Dot, dot, dot. How about that? Can you see that? Okay. So there you go. That's my Neon Nights. Love that. Really, really fun. Uh, again, you this will a little bit goes a long way. So I would definitely start with one box of it, experiment with it, embellish your artwork. 
maybe outline something or add a little bit, you know, at a time and let it dry and you can layer it to be, let it become more opaque. All right. So let's see what else I have to talk to you guys about. Oh yeah, I know. I have all this stuff ready. So I wanted, all right, let's see if I can move this out of the way. See, so this is what I've done. I know you can't see it, but I have surrounded myself with one day I'm going to get an overhead camera, a side camera. I have all these phones so I can see the comments, but I, uh, <laughs> I still haven't figured out all the camera stuff, but I'm glad you can't see it because there's stuff everywhere. I have canvases. Now I got my pretty flowers on the floor, but I do want to share with you guys. All right. So let's get rid of the Arteza paint. And then I have a huge mess to clean up. That's okay, right? And this is, you know, when I was telling you guys when I went live, it, it was so much fun and it gave me such, like, something to look forward to. I had no jobs. You know, I made so many friends like Susan virtually, and it, it made me have a purpose. It gave me a reason to get up and shower and get creative and come up with new ideas, and right? So, it's crazy how things have just changed. So again, I'm done with that. Now I want to share, share with you guys one more little project and then we'll go live another time. All right. So this is multi-surface paint. Okay. This is a very popular, let's get rid of the sharp part too. Oops. Okay. Very popular projects that I do. Wine glass painting. I don't, I'm not allowed to drink on Amazon, but I can pretend. I don't think that that's breaking the rules. So, all right, here, here's some of my wine glasses. All right. Now, the Neon Nights, you cannot use that on the wine glasses because it's not multi-surface, but they do make a multi-surface one. But they do, let me show you. I have a bunch of paints in here. Oh, I forgot to talk about my shoes. All right, let's talk about my shoes. <laughs> so I have been wearing these shoes, not these, this pair, but 20, how old am I? I've been wearing these for about 25 years, okay? Not this pair, but <laughs> dance goes. Okay, these are dance goes. They, now you can see the name, amazing shoe, okay? So... If you have never seen a dance go before, I want you guys to start looking at people that work in the medical field, people that work in the beauty industry, hairstylists, waiters and waitresses, uh, anybody that works on their feet a lot, you're, you're going to start to notice the dance goes. They are amazing. Okay. So I better look up the description because all I can tell you is how good my body feels. I can work 15 hours standing in these. So I started wearing these as a teacher. My back was hurt. And I was young. My back was hurting. My body was aching. I was on my feet all day long. And so my dance goes amazing. That's all I can tell you. Amazing. So um, this is a slip-on clog, right? And they take a little bit of getting used to because they're not snug let's say like the back of them would slip and i remember at first i was like the back keeps slipping and the, again if you read the description that's totally normal they're 100 percent leather um i also have i have so many different ones but um i wanted to focus this one because it's super durable it's black you guys can see the paint that i sprinkled on it but uh I want to read to you guys the de description. Exceptional arch support for all day comfort. So inside of there, there's also another, um, like there's an arch in the middle of it. Padded in-step collar provides comfort when walking. Breathable foam foot bud offers temperature control. Really good for people who have hot flashes. <laughs> but I didn't have hot flashes in my 20s, you guys. When I was a teacher, I was not having hot flashes, but I'm telling you, it did wonders for my bottom, my, my, my whole body rocker bottom reduces fatigue and offers shock absorption comparable to athletic footwear. 
Well, so what I want to tell you about that is that um, to me, they are way more comfortable than footwear. Now I don't go walking in them or hiking in them, but so I have done festivals that last 15 hours. I did, I have another one coming up that was the Ohio Wizard of Oz Festival and the, it was a Saturday and Sunday. I wore very expensive, very good, supportive athletic shoes on Saturday. My body was hurting so bad. I wore these on Sunday. I, I felt so much better. It was amazing. So I, I can't even say enough about them. I tell everybody that they should have at least one pair. I bought my mother a pair. Uh, again, just just start looking around and see how many you notice. I didn't start noticing it until someone else told me how many people wear these. And again, they, they started with nurses too, because they're washable, durable, and comfortable. And you will notice a difference in the way your body feels. Okay. So, and one day I think I'm going to do a whole show of all my dance goes because I have so many different pair. They last for a really long time, but I wanted different designs and they have some really cool, funky designs too, which is just one more reason to like them. So, um, okay. Let's see what else I got to talk about. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Okay, there's my dance goes. Oh, I should tell. All right, before I get on the, the painting here, I want to do this next, but I forgot about this too. So you guys, let's talk about, I'm going to talk about my outer. So I have both of these here. Right? So these are my cell phones and I'm really just trying to do my stream and my chat on my cell phone. Okay, so this is my iPhone 12 and this is my iPhone 13 Pro. I have Otter boxes on both. I have also I've I've used Otter boxes for years. So many people try and get me to um, try a different case. No way, Jose. Now, what I will you guys look at the durability. So this is the paint, okay? Because I'm a messy artist, and um. I get paint on them a lot. I have dropped them. I couldn't even tell you how many times. So when I do paint parties, I'm always videoing people and taking pictures of them. And my camera, my hands are always a mess. And this is literally what my camera looks like. I also have a screen protector on them. But the difference between this and other ones, I'm going to tell you, they are heavy. They are heavy duty. They make your iPhone way more. There's a rubber piece that goes all the way around the exterior of it. So the durability, the, you know, it makes your phone a little bit heavier, including this one, which is bigger, right? But the durability is amazing and no one can talk me out of it. So I have a screen, a screen protector on here, which I have that has that, um, what do they call that? So it's, let me listen. Now I got to read the description. The Otter Alpha Flex series with blue light screen. So I do have a tendency to get migraines, especially if I'm on the computer too much or staring at my phone too much. So this is the, this is on this one right here. Okay. I love it. And um, I got it with my Otter Box. So now where's my Otter Box? Let me show you my Otter Box. And I love, if you didn't know, my favorite color is purple. So that's why I have these different purples on there. So again, when I, so I have two in here. I got to see which one this is because I have a, yeah, here's my 13. Okay. I'll see if I, oh, here's my color. Okay. So I have purple. There's my outer box. Oh, I got to highlight the other one. See so you guys have two phones going on. It's not easy. So my little nephew, Joe, used to help me a lot. Rachel used to help me. Richie used to help me. Now they're all busy, right? Ooh, busy, busy, busy. So let's see. All right. So here's my defender that I have on my phone here. And this is the iPhone 13. I have dropped it. I have gotten it wet. 
I was kayaking and I dropped it in the water. It was in my pocket. Thank goodness it didn't sink in the water, but um, it is amazing. So again, when my niece and nephews see this, they won't put something this heavy on their phone. They like it. Their phones with no co no case on it, but do you know how often they break their phone? It's crazy. So I have dropped mine, have gotten it wet, and have gotten paint all over it. I can't say enough about them. So the what I have here, these are called OtterBox Defender. So it's the heaviest, most durable uh protection you can get. And again, I've had other people say, oh no, you need to try. No, no. Why risk it? I have, I better knock on wood, but I've never broke my phone. I do love these. Again, they are more heavy, uh, more durable. You have, you know, the places where you have your switches, your charger. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So I got to read my comments again. Thinking about two years ago when you started, your classes brought families together to spend time being creative. What a tremendous blessing for everyone. And to interact with people across the country and also the world was incredible. This is from Susan in Texas. What brand are the shoes? And um, the shoes are called Dance Goes. They are amazing. Let me take it off again. Dance Go. My favorite. This is my all-time favorite shoe. Now, I will tell you, they come in European sizes, okay? So, uh, cause they're, so can you see that? So mine, I got a big foot, you guys. I'm a 42. Can you see that? 42. 42 is a size 11. I'm an 11. Oh my gosh. Don't tell anybody. So, <laughs> but yeah, they're European, but there'll be a size chart. So depending on what size you are, Actually, one of my, I have a 10 and a half and 11. My left foot is a 10 and a half and my right foot is an 11. So, um, but they, I, I can't say enough for how good they make me feel. All right, let's go back. We only have about 20 more minutes. Okay. I did want to share with you guys the multi-surface paint. Because this is, and the markers. Let's see how much we can get through. I'm losing my voice. I got to save my voice. I got to have a voice for tomorrow, right? Oh, okay, the markers. So let's start with the paint. Ugh, am I on the wrong return to live stream? See, you'd think I'd be better at this by now. I'm sorry. Making you stare at the top of my head. <sighs> Let's see if I can find it. Oh, those markers are. There's no way I'm going to get through all this tonight, but that's okay. Maybe I'm talking too much. Here, no. I'm looking for the multi-surface paint. Oh, here we go. Okay. So. Ready for my multi-surface paint. All right. Here are wine glasses, right? So multi-surface paint means it's going to stick to any type of surface. It could be wood, it could be glass, it could be metal. So this is really, really popular um, wine glass painting, especially around the holiday time. This is a real simple project. So this one is just an eraser of a pencil and you pick the colors that you want to use. Let me see if I can find the, yeah. Okay, so this is it. This is folk art. It looks neater right there than when I show you my bottles. But I have my little bottles over here. All right, so let's get rid of the Sharpies. Here's my little folk art bottles, right? So you see it's multi-surface and they're messy, but I have all my fun colors here. And I'm using folk art, okay? So you shake it up. It's a, it's a pretty thick consistency. Let's see. I'm going to, I'll just add orange to this one. I put a paper towel in here so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to use the same plate. 
for environmental reasons, right? You could also use Q-tips. You can use anything that's round if you want to do the polka dot one. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to find an old pencil, okay? An old pencil. So this is one that we would use for paint parties. And you take the eraser and then you would just dip and dot, okay? So again, I have a paper towel in my glass just so you can see it better. And I'm going to load up my eraser. Now, when you're doing a glass, you want to stay away from the, the tip, the edge. You don't want to drink on the paint, right? Because it'll just wear off and, you know, it. I'm sure it's not good for you to be drinking. And you don't even have to bake these. They'll, they'll cure in a couple weeks, like two weeks. Don't wash them for two weeks. And you always want to hand wash anything that's hand painted, okay? So I'm going to dot it now. So dip and dot. I'm going to lightly dot it. Do you see that? And dot, dip and dot, dip and dot. And you could use, you know, your favorite colors. They could be school colors. They could be uh, sorority colors. They could be your favorite colors. So again, just dip and dot. You could do the bottom of the wine glass. And it doesn't even have to be a wine glass. It could be any kind of glass. So dip and dot, dip and dot. Come up with a color scheme. Red, green, and white. Notice I have it more dense, more dots down here, and then less as I go up. And then at the top, there's no dots, maybe like an inch from the top, right? You don't have to paint the bottom, but you could if you want to. All right. And then if you wanted to do something a little bit more detailed, Right, you could also paint like I just did, but another one so you could paint designs on there. Here, I have another one too. So, and notice you don't want to go too close to the top, and the paint is on the exterior of the glass, right? Not on the inside. Hand wash after two weeks, you just have to let the paint sit and set. Hi, Tracy G. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. I hope to see you soon, too. I will, you guys, I will go live more often. I promise. I, um, I'm i going to do more live streaming. I just have to be more consistent. And I'm going to come up with a schedule. I think that's probably like one of the hard things for me as an artist is um, la, 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 la. I get distracted and <laughs> sidetracked. And um, just like tonight, I was like, oh my gosh, it's quarter to 11 already. So I plan on going live more. Here's, again, my this is on wood. We could do a scarecrow one night. We could, there's so many things. The possibilities are endless. And I just really need to get myself structured and come up with a plan for when the best time to go live is. And uh, I'll definitely be live before um, the Amazon Prime Days, which are coming up October 10th and 11th. I'll be doing more lives um, too. I want to share with you one more. One, let's do one more supply and we'll just have to get to the rest another day. I wanted to share with you guys something else. Okay. Well, all right. Two more supplies. <laughs> all right. Where are they? Where's my bucket? Hold on. Over there. Okay. So I have them both in the cart, but you guys, these are another one of my favorite products. So these are Sharpie oil-based paint markers, okay? So because they're oil-based, they are permanent. Now, while they're wet, they can wash off. I always have rubbing alcohol nearby. So if you do something with the multi-surface paint or the oil-based Sharpies, you can use rubbing alcohol immediately to get it off. These dry within minutes and they are permanent, okay? So they're awesome, they're just permanent. So again, you have more control. You don't have to let your glass set for two weeks with those, okay? Those are gonna dry right away. So again, if you're looking for more details for outlining, I have a few of them here. So you do wanna shake it up, okay? And then you would just, I would give people a plate for these too. You could practice on the plate, but you push the tip down to get the marker going. 
Okay, so you want to get it nice and juicy. And then you literally just create your designs on your glass. Now, before I do this, the glass should always be washed with either white vinegar or rubbing alcohol. Okay, so I do like three parts water to one part rubbing alcohol or one part white vinegar. I usually fill up my kitchen sink and then I, so that gets off all the oil on the glass. Okay. And then that way the product can stick to it better, especially like fingerprints. So again, these markers are amazing. You can do any, you could do little hearts. You could, you could even do the polka dots with these, right? So they're really nice. And you could combine the paint with the paint markers as well. Same thing. Don't go too close to the rim. These are multi-surface. They work great. I can put my name on the easel. It'll stick. So these are great for metal, for wood, for glass. So this is an oil-based paint marker. You guys, I have like a thousand of them. Okay. I'll show you the other one too. What did I do with the other pack? Well, I don't know. See, I'm getting tired. All right, look at this. Wait till I show you. This is what I had to get out tonight. So I, when I do a paint party, you guys, I bring my vat of markers. I know I just show, oh, here they are. Hold on. So I have a lot of them. They're really durable. They last a really long time. You can do a ton of projects with them. They come in different colors. Let's see if I can find my other cart. Okay. Let's do this one. So this one has black, white, blue, yellow, and red in it. Okay. You can do whatever you want. You can use them on paper too, but they're made for uh, multi-surfaces. All right. And then the other pack has... Purple, pink, orange, red, I mean, green and blue. And it says, opaque paint markers marks on virtually any surface. Metal, pottery, wood, rubber, glass, plastic, stone, etc. Oh, these would be really cool on stones too. Oil-based ink is quick drying, uh, fade proof, abra abrasion proof, and water resistant. Marks opaque and glossy on light and dark surfaces. So that's why I have a vat of them. Okay, I showed you guys. Again, this is another product that I can't live without. As an artist, here's my vat of them. Okay, so yeah, I think that's um, that's what I want to share with you guys tonight. And if you guys have any questions, thank you. So I love your hat. You're cute. Thank you. So. Oh, Karen Ann. Thank you, Karen Ann. I do birds. I, I do everything, right? My birds are maybe not the greatest birds, but we could do birds again. And you guys, I do have a YouTube channel, Artist at Heart Paint Party. So I have, I don't know how, how many videos are on there. This will also be on there after. I have a free Facebook group, um, Artist at Heart Paint Party on Facebook. A lot of people that are on social media are on there. But in that group, you will find printable templates under the files tab. You guys can also um, email me. You can text me. Artistedheart.org is my website. And uh, I'm based in Cleveland, Ohio. I do in-person paint parties in Northeast Ohio. I do team building, professional development. I also do virtual parties that are live. A lot of companies are still not back in person. So I still do um, some live events for companies and for families just for fun. And uh, I love creating with you guys. So it's so much fun. I really enjoyed tonight. And I promise I will go live again soon. I don't know if I'm going to wear So this hat, you know, this hat makes me hot. I, you could probably see me sweating now, but I tend to wear the hat uh, when my hair is not having the best hair day. <laughs> so I was actually outside for a walk today and it started storming. So my hair was a little bit messy. So I just decided to put the hat on. I do have these from Amazon too. I have like a big pack of them. So they are really fun for paint parties and um, uh, 
anyway, so maybe I'll have it on next time. Maybe I won't, but they do make my heads wet. <laughs> So I am Denise with Artist at Heart. I love sharing my favorite finds with you guys. I appreciate you guys watching and following me so much. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys again real soon. I'm going to try to do it again maybe tomorrow if I can get this. Right now this room is a mess. There was at least 10 more things around me that I didn't talk to you guys about. But I promise I'll do it again. So maybe I'll go live again tomorrow night. All right. And um, thanks again. God bless you guys. Stay safe and well. And I will see you and keep creating. Be happy. Make art just for fun. It's fun art, not fine art. I'm Denise. I'll see you guys again real soon. Okay. <laughs> now I got to figure out. Now I got to figure out which phone I got to shut off. <laughs> I think it's this one. All right. Let's try the messy one. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, here it is. I'll see you guys. <laughs>